Well, after all the miles that Joey Dunlop travelled in his career, today it's just a short walk here to Gary Duff Presbyterian Church for his funeral. Just a short journey, but a journey that came too soon. Hello and welcome to Balamoney for the funeral of a man who in his lifetime brought warmth and enjoyment to so many. In a country so divided over the years, Joey Dunlop was one of those beacons who gave us all hope. A man who through his own efforts united a community and a man who brought joy to so many. And now today you can see the crowds here for the funeral of this man simply called the King of the Roads because Joey was special. And he was special for a very simple reason. He was just one of us. A man with no errors or graces. A man of the people and a man who will be sadly missed by one and all. Alongside me today in the commentary box, our racing expert and colleague, Keith Hewan. Keith, your thoughts? Well, speaking as a well-travelled Englishman, I can say that Ulster's loss maybe uniquely has been felt all around the world. Quite simply, Joey was a, a bike racer whose personal lifestyle and commitment to his family was unaffected by fame and fortune. A remarkable man by any standards, Adrian. Well, when the body of Joey Dunlop left his family home, just over a mile away about 30 minutes ago the roads lined by thousands of people who have been here from early morning to pay their own personal tribute and pay their own personal homage there are the pictures Robert Dunlop a very sad occasion obviously for him and for all the family as Joey's body is taken and carried the short walk to Gary Duff Presbyterian Church it's a funeral which has attracted so many VIPs earlier today Bruce McKendry spoke to two of those VIPs, the sports minister Kate Hoey, a lady born in Temple Patrick in County Antrim, and the sports minister from the Republic, Dr Jim McDade. I think none of us can really believe it's all happened, and um, it's a great, great tragedy. But the warmth and affection to him, you can see here today, and that's why I thought it was important that I came over here and was here representing the, the, uh, the British government. He was all that was good about people from this part of the world, wasn't he? He was a true Balamoney man and he didn't have a lot of words, but he was someone who I think if you ever met him once, then you just never, never forgot it because he had that capacity to sort of make you feel that he was just, a, you know, a really ordinary person doing extraordinary things. There are thousands and thousands of, of uh, people who have come from the, the Republic of Ireland today as well. Uh, obviously he was a great sporting hero and that is quite evidenced by the thousands and thousands of people that have lined uh, this narrow road to the church here today. And uh, we wanted to uh, recognise that as well because uh, Joey Dunlop was, as I say, a man for all seasons and a man for all people. The RUC estimate upwards of 50,000 people have come here to Balamoney to pay respects. Visitors and mourners from all around the world, from Australia, Canada, Japan, South Africa and all the European nations. I mean the legend now uh, will go on and this will be a, a focal point I feel for riders when they visit Northern Ireland to race perhaps at the North West or at the Ulster Grand Prix. Um, this will be a stopping off point for, for most teams and families to uh, come and pay their last respects to Joey if they weren't able to be here today. Many of them are. We've seen Tommy Robb, Ian Locker, Brian Morris, and I've seen here as well, Eddie Laycock, Johnny Ray, Brian Carl, to mention just a few. And words now, too, from a man who knew all about the expertise of Joey Dunlop, Mick Grant. A very special person. <coughs> uh, <coughs> You don't get people like this following Joey. I mean, it's just like a Northwest crowd. Just unbelievable. I was at Silverstone at the weekend when it, the news came through and um, <clears throat> quite clearly the place was stunned. And people that go to Silverstone would not be the average person that would come to the Northwest of the TT. Um, you know, so although Joey sort of specialised on, on roads, you know, he sort of gets to people that don't even uh, get involved in that sort of racing. You know, that's the sort of, the sort of uh, stature of the guy. And you can see there at the back, Adrian, Paul Robinson, who's just ducked out of view, nephew of Robert and Joey, successful in British championships. And there's the two sons as well, Gary and Richard, holding up very bravely indeed. There's Linda, that's Joey's wife. 
and uh, in the background Donna to the our left of Linda to her right so a family scene here that um, I have to say is very very touching uh, I suppose in times to come people will say where were you whenever you heard the news of Joey Dunlop and of course the family shots there and Willie and May the Joey's mother and father still alive and our heart today goes out to them but such a high risk sport it's hard to know just what their reaction would be to it I think when you see our sport on television nowadays it homogenizes just how dangerous it really is and even the most successful road racers run a tremendous risk that's such a fine line from disaster to race winning and and the skill of men like Joey Dunlop is it's very hard to discern for anybody that hasn't been racing a motorcycle at the kind of pace that, that Joey and his contemporaries do and obviously wrongly we all thought whenever the TT had gone through that Joey Joey would be okay and the salute and the sad scenes as the body is taken into the church here in Carried Off and the service today conducted by the Reverend John Gilkinson the minister here in Gary Duff and he will be assisted by the Reverend John Kirkpatrick the former minister here and of course the honorary chaplain to the Motorcycle Union of Ireland it was his idea to start that chaplaincy encouraged too by by Robert and by Joey Dunlop you know Joey Touch millions of people with his modesty, his humility, and his humanity. You know, I'm sure he never knew. He never knew how great a star he was. He was also a great fighter, as many of us know. Remember when he lost his finger before one of the TTs just a few years ago? He was riding hurt. Actually, he didn't think he could ride that weekend he was really really struggling but he won the 250 race in the wet in front of Mrs. Honda and Mrs. Honda's last time in the Alaman I think was 1964 his biggest worry though was not that he's lost his finger but that he couldn't keep his wedding ring on because you know that Linda would give him some stick if he hadn't got the wedding ring on and that was his biggest worry and you know, there's another side of Joey that not everybody sees. Because when he had his race face on, and he was at the Northwest or the TT or the Ulster, he looked a bit serious and a bit stern. But he was also full of mischief. You know, he went to Tallinn. He went to that race, the last race, to relax and get away from things, really, and do what he's always done. Just be a bit of a lad, really. And he invited John Harris over. John's supported him for the last 10 years with his, his 600. And John arrived at the airport, and a senior representative from the government came up to John and said, Mr. Harris, he goes, yes. He said, you're here to meet Mr. Dunlop? He goes, yes. He said, he's in jail. And John goes, Joe? He says, yeah, drunk. And with that, Joey pops his head from behind the door. He was hiding around the corner, and he just set him up, really. That was Joey. But then he won the 600 race. He won the superbike race on the old RC45 that he took off the roof of the pub yet again. And he was leading the 125. And that's how we'll always remember him. The Reverend John Kirkpatrick, a representative of the bike chaplaincy team, will come and pay another tribute to Joey. <coughs> it's an honor to be asked to pay tribute today to Joey, a, a sad and a painful one. I feel that one of the greatest tributes has already been paid in the thousands of people who have come to pay their respects in this quiet country church, so fitting for someone who loved the roads and the open roads and the quietness of his own thoughts. And here today and in many different parts of the world, there are thousands of sad hearts like ours, each with their memories and their stories, memories of family and friend, spectator, 
a fan and promoter and sponsor, of reporter, team member and fellow competitor, and it would certainly require all of these to be added together to adequately pay the fitting tribute to a man of his caliber. Bob has already made reference to some of his achievements, <coughs> but the record books contain so many of them. They clearly declare him to be one of the greatest, if not the greatest, motorcycle road racer of all time. The words of Stanley Hillwood to his famous son, Mike, when he went out on just about his first serious race on the 22nd of April, 1957, could aptly fit Joey's life when Stan said to his son, go and ride your own race, boy. Joey rode his own race. And in every generation there appear those who achieve this greatness against all of the odds. Joey's background was humble and his early struggles didn't prevent him because he had something different. He had exceptional talent in his sport. He made the difficult thing look easy, nearly poetic at times. And he made the dangerous thing look safe. Consistency was the norm. Dedication, discipline, and using his head. Even when the focus of his life was on the checkered flag, he was never inconsiderate to other riders. And in victory, he was always self-effacing. And in defeat, he was always generous to those who were ahead of him. It has been said the heights by great men reached and kept were not attained by sudden flight, but they, while their companions slept, were toiling upward in the night. I think it could well be applied to Joey for many a time as I come home to the manse down the road here. I recall the light on in the back workshop, and Joey was in there working away. We might even hear the noise of the engine as it went up the road later on that night with the car in front or the car behind, as he tested on that road that we have just come up today. And yet, fame and fortune were not to change him. And this was one of the qualities that drew and draws admiration from people who wouldn't know the difference between a, a, a Honda and a Hoover, really. We see mile after mile, island miles, waving programs, flashes of a yellow helmet, number three. We admired soft-spoken, warm heart, laughing, serious, father, husband, son, brother, and friend. We watched Achidui, Dundrod, Northwest, Killeen, TT, Brands Hatch. We appreciated Determination, consistency, talent, genius. We add to Surtees, Halewood, Agostini, Duke, Rob. We add Dunlop. To Daddy. To people you were a number one, to me you were a daddy people you were a quiet person to me you liked to party the smile of yours was real nothing there was false the night in shining armor was always in a rush the yellow helmet stood out bright the number three there too the hondo always shone out light but you always remained it true now i know why you called my sorry now i know why john called you the gork on that face you had that smirk up the paddock you'd go a walk but then the folk would start to gawk you hated the publicity, you liked to go your own pace. But the only thing I have to say, I know you love to race. The only thing you ever wanted was another Formula One. You sure showed them you could do it by giving them your 24th one. The light is on, our hearts are pumping. On the grandstand, we are jumping. The racing was your life, you just couldn't stop. But then again, why should you have done? Because you were the top of the plot. At Valster last year, there was, a, there was an awesome vibe. But you sure showed David Jeffries on the RC45. Our lives will never be the same. Our hearts will, in our hearts, you will remain deep in thought and in our laughter, because we know you were the master. We never thought this day would come when we had to say goodbye. But the memories I have of you, God, I wonder why. You were simply the best, and you know you were better than all the rest. The only thing I'd like to say, that you, Sir Joy, are all the way.
Thank you, Donna. Thank you. We close our service by singing the second hymn on your hymn sheet, words from the 23rd Psalm. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me die to lie. crowds have remained with dignity and listened to the response. To the thousands of people gathered outside Gary Duff Presbyterian Church, a very simple service, a service I suppose that would sum up Joey Dunlop, a very moving service, a beautiful tribute there from Donna to her daddy. Well, we can remember Jerry Dunlop as a successful racer, but he also excelled as a man, a man that we could all do well to em emulate more in some way. Yet in the words of Honda's Bob McMillan, he never knew he was a star. But of course, to millions he was and will be sorely missed. This is the end of an era, one that will never be repeated. Goodness and mercy all my life shall surely follow me, and in God's house forevermore my dwelling place shall be. A funeral today that attracted the VIPs, but a day very much for the people. For me, though, everything has been said about Joey Dunlop today. A huge crowd paying their last respects to the man that we all respected in broadcasting as a racer, tried to emulate in some way over the years, and certainly will hold him up, I think, as a shining example from sport, and uh, that's how I will remember him personally. In his 48 years, Joey Dunlop has been given many titles, titles that reflect a wonderful career, but today, as he leaves his church here in Balamoni for the last time, the titles that matter are husband, father, brother, and son. From today, the man who loved the sport so much is missing. And the sport is missing the man it loved so much.